All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to prove a very important property of the rational numbers, namely that they are dense in the real numbers. What does that mean? In other words, given any two real numbers, you can always find a rational number between them. So if A and B are real, and let's say one is smaller than the other, A is less than B, so like in this picture, then you can always find a rational number R that's between them. Then there is R rational with R between A and B. So again, no matter how close A and B are, you can always find a rational number between them. And this says something very interesting about the rational numbers, because even though Q is not all of R, it kind of fills up the real number line. So in other words, Q is like the real number line, but with a bunch of dots that almost fill it up. This is a picture of Q. On the other hand, let's say the uh, integers, they're not dense, they're pretty sparse, and in fact, there's a space between the two. And in fact, again, between two real numbers is not always an integer, but it is true for rational numbers. And last thing I wanna say, a consequence of this is be every real number can be approximated by rational numbers. So calculators and applied math, they exist because of this. And now let me prove this because it's a nice exercise in the least upper bound property. So here's a proof. Again, suppose A and B are real numbers with A less than B. What we want to find, we want to find a rational number R that's between the two. to find r, which is m over n, uh, such that again, m and n are integers, uh, such that r is between uh, a and b. All right, so how do we do this? Well, first of all, let's find the denominator n. And the way we'll do this, because notice, a is less than b, so we know b minus a is positive. So it is a sp small positive number, which you should think of as currency. Why currency? Because we want to use the Archimedean property. So by the Archimedean property with currency B minus A, and what number do we want to exceed? We want to exceed, let's say, the number 1. What does the Archimedean property say? There is an in a positive integer n such that if you take b minus a and add them up n times, you eventually exceed the number one. Okay, and voila, there is your n. There is your denominator. But more interesting, what is this saying? It says that even though A and B are pretty close, they're actually not that close because B minus A is at least one over N apart. So this is A and B, and we know that this is at least one over N. So they're pretty far apart. So that's the first thing. We found the denominator. Now we just want to find a numerator. And for this, just to simplify the proof, assume everything is positive. So without loss of generality, assume B is greater than A, which is positive. And for the other cases, you can check my notes. It's just, you just adapt the proof for all the other cases. So it's not a huge, um, problem. Okay, so you assume this, and why is this important? So it's actually a quite nice, quite a nice proof. Consider the following. 
What's the idea? The idea is as follows. Again, you have A and B. And if you want to find a rational number between them, start with zero. And remember, n is fixed. So think of n as 3 or something. Then start with 0 and successively add up 1 or something over n. So 1 over n, 2 over n, etc., etc., 3 over n, blah, 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 and continue until you reach the last one that's less than n, b. Let's call this m over n. So with the property that if you add this one more time, you actually have something that's greater than b. And it turns out this last element is what solves our problem. So this is actually the r that we want. So let's formalize this. So let s be the numbers of the form m over n. Again, n is fixed. Think of 3. Okay. Such that m is 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., etc. And moreover, that fraction is smaller than b. So we want to say before b. Then, what's so great about this? First of all, S is non-empty because zero is in it because remember B is positive. So S is non-empty because zero is in S. And moreover, that's amazing. By construction, S is bounded above because we said it's all the fractions that are less than B. So S is bounded above. By B. And because you have a non-empty set that's bounded above, the supremum exists. So S has a least upper bound. So then, hence, by the least upper bound property, R, let's call this R for supremum of S, which is R, exists. And I'm claiming this R is what solves our problem. So claim R solves our problem. In other words, R is a rational number that's strictly between A and B. Here's the thing, though. This is what makes the problem so amazing. It looks like S is a huge set. But actually, it's not. It's finite because you start with 0, you add 1 over n, 2 over n, 3 over n. But this process has to stop. Otherwise, you go above b. And it turns out you can rigorously show this using the Archimedean property. So if you think of 1 over n as your currency, if you add up 1 over n enough times, you go above b. So in fact, it turns out that S is finite. So fact, and you can see this in this notes, in the notes. S is finite. In other words, by finite, I mean it has finitely many elements. And what's the nice thing about a set with finitely many elements, well, and let's say a set with just five elements, for instance, it has a maximum. You see, you literally can compare all the elements and figure out which one is bigger. So in fact, not only does this set has a, have a suprema, but actually it has a maximum. So hence, the supremum of S R, which is the supremum of S, is actually also the maximum of S. What's the point? The point is, um, 
The supremum problem is only important for infinite sets. For finite sets, it's already, uh, it's not a big problem. And in particular, what this implies, this implies R is an S. Why is this cool? Because what does it mean to be an S? It means two of the three properties are already there. Namely, R is rational. And also, R uh, is less than B. Because again, we said R is a rational number that's less than B. So all that we need to show is that R is strictly greater than A. So show R is strictly greater than A. And we do that by contradiction. So suppose R, which is M over N, is less than or equal to A. But now remember, A and B, they're uh, far apart. So then, remember B minus A. But B minus A is strictly greater than 1 over N. That implies B is strictly greater than A plus 1 over N. But A is greater or equal to R. So that's greater or equal to M over N plus 1 over n, and that's n plus 1 over n. So what do we know? We know n plus 1 over n, yes, it's of the form something over n, and it's strictly less than b. So n plus 1 over n is actually an s. But look, what have we found? We found an element in s that's bigger than r. So, but, what do we know? n plus 1 over n is strictly greater than m over n, which is r. So in other words, again, you found an element of s that's bigger than r, but that contradicts the fact that r is the biggest. r being the maximum of s. Again, we said the biggest fraction, if you want, in S is M over N, but you just found a bigger fraction that is in S. And that's the problem. And again, essentially, it uses the fact that they're uh, 1 over N apart. So, you know, that's why it's, uh, you can always find a fraction R in there. So, in particular, what have we shown? So, this contradicts what? The fact that R is less than or equal to A. So, R is bigger than A. So, R is a fraction that's between A and B. Uh, and that's exactly what we wanted to show. So, right down here. All right, thank you very much.